objective for today is that you guys are going to be able to identify two specific uses of language in our text that foreshadow later events in the novel. Um, for you guys, this is going to be more helpful because we've already finished reading the book. Uh, foreshadowing, it can be useful early on, but we're going to kind of work backwards today. Uh, we've been studying literary devices such as irony, imagery, and mood. So this is going to be sort of another tool for your author's toolbox that you should keep in mind as we move forward. I want to remind you guys that our unit goal is going to be to create a short story that focuses on a, a public affairs issue that you all find important. And you're going to need to incorporate at least three of these literary devices we've discussed when we get to that point. So this is going to be another thing that you can kind of keep in mind and uh, keep handy. Um, foreshadowing ties directly into how an author creates imagery and mood for their story and vice versa. By letting the reader gain a glimpse of the future to be with their language, um, they'll hopefully become more involved and more emotionally invested in the world, the characters, and the story you're trying to create. And you're going to want that when you're talking about an issue that's important to you through your short story, because if it's important to you, you're going to want that some way. And we want precise language. We want to trim the fat down and not have it be word cute when it comes out on the page. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple instances that stuck out to me as we were reading our book, All American Boys. Um, and I flagged this is something that I might need to return to later. Now that we finished the novel, as I said, we can see how the author's use of language contributed to it. So I know uh, we didn't have our books today. That's all right. I didn't tell you guys you needed them. But so we're going to look at this gray page prior to page one. As you can see, it's all grayed out. It's different from the text and the rest of the book. And so why does this stand out to me? Uh, first, the coloring in the print is obviously different. But then I start looking at the words. It says, zoom in. Zoom in more, a little more, a boy, grain, face down on the pavement, a man above him, fists raining like stones, howling, lights and sirens, blood on the street, the boy is still moving, and then he is not. So just right off the top of your head, does this, the way this is presented remind anyone of anything? Any other form of media? Says, zoom in, zoom in more, a little more, a boy, grainy, face down on the pavement, a man above him, fists raining like stones, howling, lights and sirens, blood on the street, the boy is still moving, and then he is not. Specific and how the author is using it. 
So then we have lights and sirens. As Christina mentioned, it appears that an ambulance or the police are going to be involved. Uh, someone is face down on the pavement, this boy. Are the police arresting him? Then it talks about him moving and then how he is not moving. So this, once again, as Christina said, leads us to a conclusion this might be police brutality. Uh, the novel's not started, but through this little snapshot, we've kind of been able to form some opinions and hypothesize about what's going to happen later. Uh, let's try one more here. On page 14, the reader learns that the main character, Rashad, has a friend named Carlos, who is somewhat of a famous local spray paint artist. He goes by this tag. Carlos goes by Lost. So Carlos is known for spray painting around the city, but Rashad's the one that's sort of his muse. He gives him his inspiration, his ideas, his pointers, but Carlos is the one that actually creates the art. So these tags are all over the city, and we can also infer that on that same page, um, they're all hanging out in the bathroom. It's sort of a locker room type space, but they get away from the jocks. And you have everybody giving Carlos a hard time. He's not on the basketball team. They're like, hey, man, you can't get any girls. But that doesn't matter to Carlos, because he's still going to give them all a ride to the party later. Why? Because he's their friend, and Carlos generally seems in this passage like an all-around good guy. We're not sure about this, but we can infer it. So now let's go to page 160. Rashad's just been beaten up. This is a confirmed incident of police brutality. He's been beaten within an inch of his life. He's been in the hospital for about a week. He's finally been cleared enough so that his friends can come see him, among them, Carlos. Everybody's really hesitant about what to do. They've got a big basketball game coming up, and the coach has said no one can get involved. Well, Carlos isn't on the basketball team. He says, all right, guys, somebody has to do something. Somebody has to do something about this. They tell him not to, but what do we know about Carlos? We know that he's good at spray paint, and we also know that he's very loyal to his friends no matter what. So later on in the novel, when a tag appears in front of the school that says Rashad is absent again today, you can look backwards and see that this was foreshadowed all the way at the beginning of the book. You know what kind of person Carlos is, you know what his skill set is, and you know that he's loyal to his friends. Alright, so now we're going to have you guys practice uh, looking for some foreshadowing. I have a handout I'm going to give you here. Um, and on these pages, we're going to be looking for something that foreshadows one of three events. Make that a little easier since you guys didn't have the book. Um, the three events we're going to be choosing from to look for foreshadowing for is a school protest in March that will happen at the end of the novel, knowledge that the police officer had had previous violent altercations, or the introduction of the secondary character Quinn and what kind of person he so I'm going to give you a couple minutes here to read that passage individually, the two pages there, and I'd like you to look up when you're done. All right, so go ahead and do that for me now. Read the two pages and look up when you're done.
since there's three of you, I'd like you guys to kind of group up into one piece. One group. All right, you're going to choose an event. And once again, you have the introduction of a secondary character named Quinn, who will be important later in the book. You have the school protest in March or the knowledge that the arresting officer had previous violent altercations. You guys are going to have five minutes to look through the text, and uh, you're going to look for specific uses of language by the author that give you some indication that your chosen event is going to be foreshadowed. Do you guys have any questions?
Rizzo, who ends up being the officer's name, is good friends with Quinn uh, and is a father figure to him. Quinn is the boy depicted as being a uh, blurry face as Rashad is thrown to the ground. Um, so there ends up being a connection between those two individuals. Uh, you get to learn that Officer Galuzzo once almost beat a kid to death so that a bug, so that he wouldn't bother Quinn anymore on the playground. You also learn that Officer Galuzzo, uh, this isn't the first time he's been suspended from the police force. And as you say, he, he knew all the right things to say, almost as if it was rehearsed. Um, do you guys have any ideas on how the author could have done a better job of foreshadowing these later events or what you wish you would have put in there?